now I think uh, next thing is very important. These two meetings we have run with our perception. But no meeting can run until you decide what is good for you. We are not taking any decisions. We are having a brainstorming here, which will continue uh, after that. Only thing I am wanting to say, I personally would not like it to take a shape of another association with elections and all. This is purely academic body. And as I made it very clear, the whole purpose is uh, the thing. Even I would not like to waste time on business meeting because you guys are so busy, but I have to have some guidelines on how do I run it. There was a suggestion that create a, a group, a diversified group for the next meeting to do, and then we go on. Having said that, we need academic <coughs> inputs on how do we run logistics and administrative support foundation we provide. I request Dr. Gupta and Mahesh, they have the largest experience, to initiate uh, this brainstorming. Thank you, Dr. Bhandari. Uh, the question Dr. Bhandari is asking how this uh, robotic council is going to work in future, actually. You know, this is what you want <coughs> us to tell you, Dr. Bhandari. Yes. So, yes. if anybody like to make any suggestion, they like uh, multi specialty uh, or you like to have a multi specialty group meetings like this, or you want we should have specialty wise meetings. And uh, what's way is the suggestion? Please give us, then we will discuss on that. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be varied opinions on this. I am, if you take a vote, I would be in favor of a multi-speciality because in our, what phase I am at least, I would be learning from experience and, you know, even case presentations. I just saw that uh, beautiful video of the right-sided nephrectomy. I'm not a urologist, but it looked very nice and I could see how the clip applier could, you know, angulate itself and be able to apply that clip. So, you know, small tips are there which we would learn from each other. There are people who are, who've got thousands of series. They may not want to uh, be involved with a multi-speciality. If you take my opinion, personally, I would favor a multi-speciality group meeting where we have interesting case presentations, videos, and things like that. Yeah, no, uh, I would say that since robot as such is a technology driven, you divide the thing into like maybe one and a half day. You have a common session of half a day where everybody speak about their tips which can others can replicate irrespective of the organ, the technique, what they innovated, different port placement. And then afternoon we break up into two or three speciality wise meeting. So nobody's time is wasted. But it's very important and not just speciality. For example, you take prostatectomy, I'm sure hundred people, ninety nine percent of the step is same probably at this moment. But there is some way you can pick up, you can make robot do certain things which others may not have known it. So you have a common in the morning where everybody contribute, keeping in mind uh, that it is not department specific. Then break away in the afternoon into specific, at least four to five broad speciality. So they spend time and everybody's time is utilized. So a common meeting of all the people where the discussion could be a technical and whatever uh, uh, other, other things. And this uh, afternoon you have a, a focus uh, uh, meeting of each speciality. Sir, uh, even I am the opinion of what Dr. Somshekar has told, uh, but only thing is that we are now a small group. So now to break up into, say, for example, thoracic, few, three, four surgeons will be sitting over there. As we grow, we can plan for that. As of now, for next couple of years, I think we should grow, and then once the numbers are more, then it has some meaning to have a different groups meeting. As of now, we, are, as uh, Dr. Prasad told, so we will be learning from each other. So let us start with a group now. And in future, we can think of breaking and having, because the presentation will also be a one-day program, compact, everybody will be interested and we interact with each other. I think we can start as a starting point, and then every year we see how the experience goes. And then uh, if there is a need of modification, one, one can do that. Yes, Deepak? Um, I think, yeah, but it is also very important to not lose uh, track of, for example, I'll just give you an example. If you look at the cumulative data, of robotic radical cystectomy is done by the groups over here. If you actually have a common database and you look at the numbers, it will easily get into a very good quality international publication if it's a properly done multi-center collaborative work. So I think these efforts, already we are reaching those numbers. And amongst the specialities, we should have these uh, discussions to start on how do we collect data, how do we uniformly. So that will happen more at a speciality-based uh, meeting. 
So I think that is also very important. I, I believe uh, what Mahendra started was that collection of this thing. Now we can have one uh, session where uh, a report can be given, say how many data we have got, how many this thing, and then they would do the ana analysis and suggest this is ready for the publication. What do you think? We have to have, see, Deepak, you know and uh, everybody knows, Rajiv knows, it's a different cup of tea to have data and it's a totally different cup to write the data. And let me tell you, those skills are available only in 10% in my experience. So we will have to have people who will pick up these subjects who are renewed to it, but yet they would not take away, hijack the whole thing. Sure. If Even if X has done, he doesn't have the skills to write down, he would be accredited at the right position. In the we can work out their international guidelines, so the but only few people will have to really sure, be sure. PI is what you call. Data belongs to everybody, but PI would be appointed according to his expertise. Like if there is a urethral uh, stone or something, uh, his center becomes, and it's totally on the basis of expertise they have. So the creation of these uniform databases for specialty-wise or organ-wise or whatever, will, will this be done by the foundation? Yes. Foundation with the help of the expert. Circulate to you in that group. And get a consensus. We have already databases. We'll circulate to databases, have consensus, have minimum feed, feed it, and then open to suggestion. But the logistics and running all we will do that. Now the question is now we are trying to hold a meeting. Now I think if I'm correct, how do we hold a meeting? Who would be the responsible person? Who organizes it? Do we have uh, say take Vetagoti um, uh, local office to organizing the logistic and then uh, of course uh, there would be like any conference there will be resources to uh, raise the fund and then um, uh, and then uh, so the scientific part should be a core group from each speciality uh, which will uh, draft and uh, prepare for the for the meeting let me be very honest any any activity like industry model, totally funded point to point, has a very different motive. I don't say academic doesn't have it. But like GU surgeons, nobody says who pays for their head travel and how they go. I have that model in the mind that what equity foundation is not withdrawing. Next year we announce we'll do two meetings. But if this meeting is being accepted as uh, all covered meeting, let me tell you, the academic activity will go down. We have to work out a model wherein after two years we should feel this is a meeting I can't. I'll cancel all my things, but I'll go for this meeting. Then only we'll be able to come out with it. So in order to facilitate and take it to that level, foundation will support. But as Mahesh said, academic component, we will still coordinate, provide you back office support. But it has to be the whole group interacting and churning. We will do the thing of sending group, special group to specialty-wise interest. We'll do everything. But until you pitch in, you know, it would not be a vibrant academy. Mahesh, uh, two points. First, I am convinced that it has to be a multi-speciality one. I have learned a lot of things. And I can see how the prostate, how I can take it in a small baby for a pull through procedure. I'm sure Sri will join me on this. So there's a lot to learn. We have learned laparoscopy the same way. The second thing I would give a special uh, mention here is that out of some meetings, let some meeting have an academic background of a medical college or a university supporting it. Because that will take us to the level of the future medical students. Otherwise, this technology or this is unlikely quickly to come to a medical college. We are, have all been part of public life, public health sector. And so therefore, if there is any university, which I could invite as a spearheading vice chancellor of that university, I think let us take one of the meetings to a university or a college level where the future surgeons can see where the horizons exist. No, I think we are open to everything. Uh, yeah. made very good. I good, would good appreciate suggestion. if you could speak in my, your name. Because uh, this all goes into proceedings and please I am uh, Dr. Sanjay Oak. Sanjay Oak, sir. I am a professor Pediatric. of pediatric surgery. I was the director of Mumbai's health for eight years. I was the chief of KM Hospital. Now I have been the selected as vice chancellor of uh, Dr. 
Padma Shri Dr. Devai Patil University in Mumbai and I spearhead that university and I continue my surgery very actively. Thank you. Thank you. Are you using robot now? No, we are on you are, that. You are we, yeah, yeah, we are on that. He is an excellent laparoscopic surgeon that I have seen him. Uh, any other? See, what, what should be the duration of the meeting? One day or one and a half day or two days? And I would, I would really like you to even decide when do you want next meeting, Saturday, Sunday, because this is the group, this time I had to call so many people to find a date and use my personal influence, but decide now and we'll announce the meeting now itself, if we can decide a date. Only thing we'll have to check, it should not be clashed with us. I think uh, what is important in the beginning, um, sharing the ideas here, uh, you have a limitation, uh, but sharing the idea on the uh, cup of tea or a, you know, yes. whatever. So, you know, where an individual can, um, uh, uh, then I think this meeting should be uh, include one and a half day or something like that, you know. Yeah, if we are going to have justice, it, this time it was so difficult, really, because, you know, until you give a time for discussion, no meeting is going to be beneficial. So if we decide we could begin on Saturday. But we suppose we begin on Saturday, say at um, 10 o'clock or 10.30, so we can come here on Saturday morning. Saturday evening, stay here, and Sunday afternoon we leave. Right. So that would be the most. Right. So Sunday evening. Sunday evening. Yes, Dr. Dobra. I'm sorry to say, sir, you have gone far ahead. I will be talking at the level of the family planning. Family planning doesn't mean to restrain or restrict, to rear a good breed of people. I think association needs to think about, when we make an association, we have to think about the quality of the training, what we are giving to those. I can find, we are being in the insured, the many people come, sir, I want to do robotic surgery. What is your level? What is your standard? What is your caliber? How I decide? Whom to say yes, whom to say no? I think we have to define some level. That there has to be some uniformity in the standard of training, in the level, in the number, in the strength. I think it is our responsibility when we make an association, we have to think about this also. Well, this is very important. Anybody who sit in a console, in a conference, in an exhibition for two minutes, is the same as Dr. Gagan who spent two years in Chicago. So I think uh, one has to lay down some jot stick that this is the level of the training minimum required for this in order to be called as a console surgeon. There are going to be legal problems. There are problems in other area. This is what if anybody land into any problem, who is going to answer? Whether I am responsible, whether the association is responsible, institute is responsible, I don't know, because we need to be clear about these issues. Yeah, I think this is very important. I like uh, Once we start working, this will automatically should come, because uh, I know in SIU and in uh, uh, Endurology Society, there is, a, there is a, 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 a person and a group which is, in, which is dedicated for the teaching and training and uh, um, uh, recognizing the center for training. Uh, because it is looking at the full globe. Similarly, uh, we are beginning. Robots is very in infancy here, and whole India is quite uh, large. So we'll have to have a training site and thing, and that should be person responsible. And of course, here the uh, uh, the parent of um, uh, organization will be helpful because uh, even they will be benefited for that. I'd like to make a comment on this. Dr. Dogra, uh, we have seen the laparoscopy era, and at that time also there were few who started, they were become the pioneer and all that, and they started claiming, they wanted to start a MCH program in laparoscopy, and I was the one who said no. There's no question of any degree or something like that, because this is a technology, and everybody has to adopt. The problem is the middle level, those who are already out in the practice, where they will get the training. But as far as the postgraduates are concerned, I think so it is the responsibility of the each department to train each postgraduate in that particular technology. I think so, and laparoscopy has shown that way in last 15 years today. Now practically every MS student is trained in laparoscopic surgery. Same should go to the MCH in urology or any other specialty. 
but your point is well taken there should be some level of training and that we can certainly define yeah. and uh, we will do we we'll create user groups the points are not we just i'm taking note of everything now what i would uh, request you is when do you want next meeting I don't want the date, but I want the month and the period. So then I can work around for the date because this is the best time when you can decide. Next year. Uh, next year. Uh, so when do you want the next meeting? February or March, you know, like that. Is February or March is fine? We'll give you adequate notice. but we would like that you participate in the meeting and we'll work out the program with you which would be as i get a consensus it would be amalgamation of common session as well as specialty interest leaving those who are not interested in can go but those i would like to see what is happening in other specialty so we will try to do that because branching it into a specialization we will be doing the same mistake of creating silos what we have and we would like it to be robotic as a common platform we are not talking of robotic only we are talking of uh, computer assisted surgery and i have a dream that if we are able to bring the knee joint replacement thing i will also combine it with this so it is we are trying to get into a next era <coughs> of the surgery uh, so february and march would be the probable meeting i get a clue in you are willing to spend a weekend with us uh, and the last thing is very very blunt dr madari one minute the, when you said this computer assisted should we change the name of also no, this no, we will keep it keep it robotic why then say computer assisted we will do that at appropriate time <laughs> only one point i would like say so don't take my me my otherwise my that uh, foundation is committed to support but as i said that any activity which does not have the contribution from the members is like attending a wedding and i am willing to go by the group for how gradually we can make it a self sustaining meeting because uh, year after we will give the support but year after year to really point to point is different is a very frank confession and i am willing to go the way you how you decide how do we do it are you prepared to go to india or you would like to be in delhi no, uh, it's again a decision to you i want this group to meet and uh, i am so if it is clearly thing we we will do there there's no problem if he's going to india i think um 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 uh, uh, oak wants to <laughs> it is diva patel university we are located in new bombay Yeah. No, only point is we would initially like to go to a place where there is a robot. Robot is there. Definitely, point is well taken. Not that it is risking your arm to buy a robot, <laughs> but all we would like to say that we would like to because then we can include some live demo also from there. From the from the cost cost point of view, Yuvraj, um, you know. Um, i can invite him nadia you know it will be cheaper so anyway we will we will work yes please. no i i have a suggestion number one see uh, it's also very important other than academics that it makes it popular uh, like you always take it on rotation north south east west and try to involve one of the robotic institution which is tied up with we are along with it two things happens uh, one is no need to have it in a five star hotel in a hall and spend you can use the infrastructure of that particular institute institute chipping number one second thing is never start a meeting like what we started always start at saturday afternoon end at sunday evening you have only one day accommodation and everybody can fly in morning this is number one and now you're done in north go to south and once in east west and always involve the local institute also who are a part of it there is a commitment of some finances and dedication from them if you have it in their institution all other people who are doing robotic but are not invited they are also being a part of it it's spread awareness so it's very important to involve the institution more around four quadrants and dive it on saturday to sunday only good thank you very much you somebody can you guys know what i i don't know the next meeting you know we can have it more by okay no no i think what so that will do of course relaxed will be sponsoring it <laughs> <laughs> no, what we would like to do i will only make a minus suggestion it would not be individual institution sorry i it would be all group of institution like when you are talking of mumbai it is asian heart you and if there is third robot and pune people yes. 
So we will work out something because I really don't want to create silos. Silos only for focus, development of specialty, but interactive kind of thing, cross-pollination of ideas, learning from each other, working as a team, that's what is lacking. And believe me, competition is not going to harm anybody, it's going to be advantageous for everybody. So that's what, and I think there are lots of things, so all those who want uh, to do that, I will write to you specifically, please offer what would you like to do, and foundation is always keen to do whatever we can. But I thought that this process should begin gradually rather than abruptly I suddenly tell you next meeting I'm not doing it. So I'm just Dr. sensitizing Khan the people. Dr. Khan, please. Yes, Khan. Sir, uh, just want a humble clarification in my mind. Uh, I have heard all morning that the foundation is willing to support uh, every academic venture, robotic surgery. I mean, I've been hearing it all morning. Uh, I just would like to clarify in my own mind, how is the Vatikuti Foundation supporting academics to promote robotics in India? Okay, that I think you were... You At an individual late. level, I would no, like to... No, you, you came late, I had made it point, and I will repeat those four slides for you just by telling. <coughs> Foundation has a limited resource. From the corpus we come, we don't take, so far we haven't taken any money from anywhere. And we want to put our resources to the best advantage. We have identified database and creating high level publications, training surgeons and creating the high level manpower, recognizing the robotic talent, innovations as the thing. The only point which is sensitive, which I can't answer yes or no, is supporting individual visits for presenting posters and all, which is a very tall order for me. And second thing is supporting the live transmission for the local meeting, which also there are a number of requests which come to us are really, because that is very expensive. You do three centers, it costs 80,000 rupees or something like that. So, uh, j Just to get back, I am getting a number of requests from thoracic surgeons who are interested if you are individual in, case, we can talk later. Uh, no, no, it's not individual. Yeah, but it, just it's a generalization for just, all specialities. Just, just put abstract that how what is that you would like foundation to fund, and we are open to it. No, how, if people are requesting you to be trained, how, who do we approach for supporting these people? Do we approach yeah, the foundation, we or do we approach the, the governing council, or, or who do we See, approach? Another, that, that's my question. Thing, what I say that I will have to write everything is budgeted. <laughs> What we have said in that slide was, if you are invited to mentor somebody to other center, we'll pay for it. If we know that there are significant number of cases you are going to do, you are going to run an academic program. Similarly, if somebody wants to come and do, and if he is from a robotic center, we will support him. But that way, if you say a whole postgraduate is the purpose of is this to learn robotics, our objective is that if the training is done with you, he should be able to utilize it in some manner. Is the purpose of this governing council also to create a corpus where we can support training or for surgeons to visit elsewhere? Yeah, Richard, maybe. Because, you know, the uh, moment you define any function, uh, it is need to be budgeted. Then we have to find how we can create a budget. Yeah, I think and currently then finances, I assure you, if it is not an individual thing, we will we'll support it, and I have a mandate to say that. But obviously, I would like it to, to grow to the extent that we look for other sources, and that's where you are. Learn from Gujarati. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. First thing is last last two meeting. One minute, Rajesh. Last two meeting has been very well organized. And how many of you are from Delhi? Thirty-eight. And how many from outside Delhi? 22. 22. So, um, only 22, you know, this is a logistic, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, I <laughs> think so the meeting is in Delhi. Delhi. The whole idea is not, but I just want to sow the seeds because... You first and the Raj. Yeah. So, just taking it a little further, we've had conferences, you know, we are all members of other associations also in addition to just being robotic surgeons. Uh, there is some conference being organized in Kolkata. So the organizers asked me that would you like to do a live transmission of robotic surgery there. 
but along with that came a rider that yes we would want that but you would have to sponsor that so you know that becomes a little tricky affair because as an individual and i go to my institution institution says no we are not interested so it becomes a little tricky situation when it comes to participating we will we'll give you the know how sure you can and the other is that you know when we are organizing a conference like i had organized a minimal access surgery conference at apollo delhi and we had 12 live surgeries of which then i said okay fine one will be a robotic surgery so i did a robotic surgery we had 3d transmission in the auditorium with everybody being given glasses so whenever we organize conferences which are not necessarily robotic surgeries as robotic surgeons <laughs> we should try and include at least one surgery robotic which can be showed to the audience and you know it will just spread the message further I dr sud only one thing i can tell you arun that if you need access to our hospitals if the meeting is in calcutta we would be able to request apollo calcutta you know it about you know you can do it but we would be able to if you want to do it in ahmedabad we will give you access to the robot and but this is a perennial thing folks see so many uh, regional bodies are telling you they see excitement in this but they are not willing to pay for the transmission and certainly <laughs> we find it exorbitantly expensive not that we will not do it but we'll have to see how much value we extract out of that kind of thing 30 people watching or uh, people talking it doesn't so i think that is the area which is very expensive <laughs> but definitely we mean that it should be percolated down to those who are not doing robotics future <laughs> robotics sir my submission is that uh, we are concentrating uh, through this these meetings for awareness and spread of the uh, spread of the technology awareness amongst all the uh, people who are involved in the uh, op operative surgery this is a question of new technology as you have mentioned right from open to endo to lapro to robotic we are graduating one by one now till now we are able to penetrate only in the private institutions and the autonomous bodies here and there but in the entire sector who is uh, which is responsible in india for training maybe medical colleges maybe the government sector we are not able to make aware or sensitize the top brasses or decision makers and if we are not interacting with them simultaneously and uh, uh, spreading the awareness this will not be adopted yeah. it will be concentrated only in the few centers right. and uh, this interaction how we another thing which is coming like in my institution ro this in principle is uh, 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 accepted that robot is to be procured but there are various levels and somewhere the cost also come into picture entire hospitals budget is uh, say Uh, uh, 50 cr uh, crore and uh, if it goes 20 crore for robot then everybody is watching at all steps and they don't understand this is a new technology and it is to be adopted fast it it is hampering two way one the entire government sector entire uh, your medical colleges 338 medical colleges wherever i'm not saying in every medical college they are they are kept out <laughs> of this preview and also that uh, the trainer training uh, which is given to the residents graduates they depend on few uh, private centers where they have to um, fi uh, find out how to get that how to get them introduced and right in the beginning as uh, it was mentioned earlier the post graduates are not going to be exposed to this they will be exposed only in the exhibition on the consoles that's all and uh, it is very difficult you have to think in that direction out thank you rajiv uh, i'll just give you give you next thing which i was going to say we are announcing vatikuti global robotics meeting 2014 again we will take care of that meeting any one of you i uh, many of you participated in what we did in 2012 i suppose here in delhi and uh, so we are announcing that meeting we'll have to work out a thing last time we showcased american and international faculty this time we will like to showcase 
the Indian faculty and do the live demonstration. And that is the time, Rajiv, we can really play politically and invite these people at some forum when we can really open their eyes and educate them on what the robotics is doing. So That's plus, a, at the same time, I have been doing academic plowing, not with a marketing intention, whether Gangaram's robot or Rajiv Gandhi's robot. I have gone and talked to the management as and when it was invited, and it has made a difference. So I am available for purely academic thing. I went and delivered lecture in Chandigarh, and that's where the whole thing began, Ganga Ram. So I am always available, and I come to the country. If anything helps, most of them are my friends, you know, one meeting is due. But uh, you please uh, take me, and I would like to plead with that. But you are right, this inertia will take a <coughs> long time to do. We are way ahead from uh, six uh, sick installations, not all of them to 21 is a great achievement. From four robotic surgeons trained of five, of one migrated outside in 2010, we have 48 people now. So I think we are growing, but it will take time, and we have to accept that it is not an easy technology to introduce cost-wise and otherwise. Thank you. Any, any suggestion, you can always yeah. write the email address is there. So we we'll create a user group and like that, and we will do that. I wanted uh, you and Patikuti Foundation. Uh, Mr. Subramaniam has started some work, but I think this needs to be, this is about the reimbursement of the robotic charges by the insurance companies. Uh, this is a problem we are facing every day. You convince a patient for surgery, they are fully convinced, then you, you are given a TPA form, you fill up the form, the moment it goes robotic, if the answer comes back, Robot is not acceptable, please give quotation for open surgery. Then you write 100 lines and finally, the patient is made to pay the robotic charges. At least what I'm experiencing, we are experiencing Gangaram. What they do, even after maximum pleading, giving sometimes we have even given papers, they say whatever is the robot user charge, that <coughs> money will be minus, that patient has to pay. So if I do a thymectomy, whatever is the robot user charge imposed by the hospital, that the patient will have to fund, which is about a lap rupee. 